Hi. Now, in this tutorial, what I want to do is show you how we can go about squaring out a bracket. I'm going to show you a quick way of doing it. But before we do that, we need to do it the slow way first of all. And that is x plus 3 all squared is the same as multiplying x plus 3 with another x plus 3. And what we get is that if we expand this in the usual way, we've got x times x, which is x squared, and then x times 3, which is 3x. And we've also got 3 times x again, another 3x. And then finally, we've got 3 times 3, which is plus 9. So this comes out at x squared for the first term, and then we've got twice the 3x, which is going to be 6x, and then we've got the 9 on the end, which was the result of squaring the 3. Let's try another one before we do this quick way again. Let's take 3x minus 5, for instance, all squared. This is identical then to 3x minus 5 multiplied by another 3x minus 5. And what we're going to get with this one is 3x times 3x. We're going to square that 3x, giving us 9x squared. And then we get 3x times minus 5, which is minus 15x. But we get it again when we do minus 5 times 3x here. So we get minus 15x. And then we get minus 5 times minus 5. We square that minus 5 and get plus 25. And what this results in is 9x squared, the square of the first term here. And then we get twice the minus 15x, the result of doubling this product here, 3x times minus 5. That gives us minus 30x. And then we've got 25, which is the square of minus 5, plus 25 then. So you might have got the idea, just by listening to the way I was trying to explain that, of this quick way. And we'll demonstrate it now with this one here, x plus 4, all squared. We don't need to go through this, these two stages here, really. All we get to do is square the first value. It's going to be x squared. When we expand this, we'll get x times 4, which would be 4x. And we'd also get 4 times x, which would be 4x. We get twice the product of these two terms here. So we end up with 4x plus 4x. We double that and get 8x. And then we square the last term the plus 4. Squaring that, 4 times 4 would be plus 16. So we can go straight to the solution here. Now I've got a few examples that you might like to try. Here we are. We've got x minus 6 all squared. I chose this one because we've got a negative value in it. And then this one with a fraction in it. And then I thought I'd put the x term as the second term in the bracket. So a uh, bit of variety here. So if you'd like to have a go, give you a moment just to pause the video, come back when ready, and we'll carry on with these work solutions. Okay, welcome back if you had a go. So with x minus 6 all squared, we've got that this is going to be identical to squaring the first term, so that would be x squared. And then we do twice the product of our terms. We would have minus 6x, and we would have another minus 6x. So that's going to be minus 12x. And then we've got minus 6 multiplied by another minus 6, or minus 6 all squared, which is going to be plus 36. With x minus 3 over 2 all squared, this is going to be identical to first term squared, x squared, the product of the two terms, x times minus 3 over 2, would be minus 3x over 2, or minus 1 half x. 
we double that and we're going to get minus 3x. And then we square the last term and if you square minus 3 over 2 you're going to get plus and you're going to square the 3 which is 9 and square the 2 which is 4 so plus 9 quarters. I'm going to leave it like that though. Now with 3 plus 2x all squared well, again, square the first term, 3 threes and 9. The product, 3 times 2x, well, that's going to be 6x. We double that, and that's going to be 12x. And then we add to this the square of 2x, which is going to be 4x squared. And in the last example here, 4 minus 5x all squared. Square the 4, that's going to be 16. The product of our two terms is going to be minus 20x. So we double that, so it's going to be minus 40x. And then if we square minus 5x, we're going to get plus 25x squared. Notice, by the way, how always the last term here, whether we've got a negative in here or a positive, it always turns out to be a positive term on the end. OK, well, I hope that's given you an idea then of how we can quickly go about squaring a bracket. Don't make that classic mistake where you just square the first term and square the last term. It doesn't work. OK, so uh, there we go.